Royal Naval uh, Institute, Royal Navy's Institute of Medicine. And uh, they've got two facilities here, and the one we're in now is the cold chamber, um, which they can keep in a temperature of about minus 20 to minus 30 degrees centigrade, because we try to rate everything from tent seamings, tent poles, radio equipment, batteries, right way down to minus 50 degrees centigrade. We, we want every single component to be able to operate in a proven way at that temperature, because everything we have in our sledge is super critical to the project. There's no luxuries, nice to have there. And um, if something breaks, it's very unlikely we can mend it in the field, especially more technical equipment. Um, so we have to know it will work. We've made, um, I would think, about 15 changes, some of them major, um, to this um, off-the-shelf tent. Mm. Um, it's made by a company called Hilleberg yeah. um, in Scandinavia, who are like the Rolls-Royce manufacturers of tents. Um, we've taken out the inner tent, which would help to keep one warmer, but we want to lose the weight. Um, we're going to be very cold anyway, we're not really interested in saving the, the, that. We'd rather save the weight than gain the heat. We've had a, a special loo flap. Well, in fact, that flap there yeah. is for um, kitchen gash, um, spare fluids and so on, that can get poured down into the snow yeah. um, and the ice below. And there's a bigger one behind in the, in the last section, so that in the worst case scenario, if we're pinned down in, in, in a major storm, um, or somebody who becomes very, you know, become ill or anything like that, um, we have an in-house internal uh, loop. Yeah. Um, but actually, uh, we all prefer, even in pretty much the worst circumstances, to go out yeah. and do our business um, privately and away. Um, what else have we got going? We've got, we've had this special tunnel entrance put in, so um, that you can, it's a double entrance in the sense that, a bit like a sphincter, <laughs> Um, you don't open this up. The point is, that just, there's no zips, no moving parts in the sense of zips and so on. Nothing that can break. You undo this one, you undo this one, and you then to get your, push your body in or you move in or out. Um, what happens in the first four to six weeks is that it's so cold that the zips here, which are normally provided, especially from about this height upwards, depending on if it's very, very cold, it's pure ice over the zip all the way up. As the temperatures rise and the expedition unfolds over three, four weeks, the ice starts to move higher and higher. It, it, won't, it just doesn't freeze on those zips there. Yeah. But until it's pretty much unfrozen to there, you can't, this, is, you can't this doorway is not going to happen. Yeah. So um, this is the second doorway for the second half of the expedition, and, and the tunnel entrance is the uh, doorway for the first half. These are all lessons we've learned over the years. In the old days, I used to have a, uh, a stove and I used to have to melt my way open. It's wasting fuel, it's wasting time, a risk of damaging the zips, and then you've got a bus door, and so on. We've also had a tunnel chimney put in, so that um, uh, like we can pull. This has, um, I don't know if you can see through there, but there's a little tunnel, a bit like a funnel on a, on a ship. Um, can you see out there? Which means that the warmest air, which is also the wettest air, yeah. underneath where we're cooking at night, can escape because one of our big enemies is, is moisture accumulation in here. Yeah. One of the processes of combustion uh, of uh, a stove burning fuel is water vapor. We want that to go, so we put this little um, chimney up, and then at night when we finish cooking, this comes out. We can pull this down and close it off. Job done. Brilliant. So, uh, and then we have hanging lines, drying lines. And there'll be far more than these when we're there, crisscrossing in a macrame of rope work, um, actually from here, right the way through the tent. So we're hanging our gloves, our cameras, all sorts of things off, off the structure of the tent. It can take quite a lot of weight, these poles. Um, the higher up you are, there's a very steep temperature gradient. From the floor, yeah. there'll be snow on the floor. Um, you'll get frostbite putting your hand on the floor yeah. with a bare hand um, at sort of minus 35 or more for any length of time. Yeah. There's always snow on the floor. It's, uh, so it's minus 30 there, say. If it's minus 35 outside, it might be minus 30 here. And then there's a temperature gradient, so you get to about zero there. Yeah. And then you might get to plus 25, plus 30 degrees in the top oh, two or three yeah. inches, which is why you want to have all your stuff hanging really high up. Yeah, so it dries dry well, off. Then. And then at night, before you go to sleep, yeah. you turn the stoves off. You don't want all the ice to freeze onto these things in, in there, so you then shove the, take it all off, shove it in your sleeping bag.